Hi, everyone. It's Dane again, your friendly neighborhood pharmacist, here to talk to you yet again about Methylene Blue. Today, we're just going to look at, particularly at uh, one study and also talk about bias and misinformation and context. Cue the trumpets. Methylene blue at a certain dose doesn't affect the microbiome, which is very beneficial and you need it for a healthy life, uh, but it enhances cognitive abilities. There is an article on the internet that references likely this study, uh, but omits all of the results and the undertone is completely opposite of showing beneficial effects at a certain dose. Uh, one of the studies that I wanted to look at in particular is not necessarily, well, first of all, it's not a human trial. It's actually a trial that was done on mice. So we can learn from mice. We can extrapolate to some extent uh, from what's done with them. Uh, the other reason I wanted to talk about it is because after reading the study and, and hearing, you know, finding the results, looking at the results, uh, I, I ran into another article on the internet uh, that actually technically didn't reference the study. They don't give the title, but this is the only study I know of that does a long-term investigation of, of long-term use, so four weeks of methylene blue use on mice, testing both uh, gut microbiome composition uh, and cognitive ability correlation, so the connection between the two, all right? So unless there's another study out there that I'm not aware of, the article that I had read a little bit after reading the study also talks about this study, but we come to two very different conclusions, and that's what brings in context, bias, discernment, discretion, and everything in between. So getting into the study, this study was uh, actually done in Russia, and it was done in 2020. I believe it was published November 18th uh, of 2020, so it's a fairly recent study. I mean, at least back in pharmacy school when I was in there, they wanted you to use studies that were no uh, older than two years old. And I think that really implies the context of a learner's mindset that healthcare is ever expanding and the more recent the literature uh, arguing certain other factors, right? Uh, the likely it's, it's the most correct information at the time because you have to assume that if the study has been done, they have the precedent leading up to it and at least would acknowledge if they're trying to um, combat against the status quo. Like say something was established in 1980, reestablished in 1990 or confirmed and then confirmed yet again in 2010, let's say, uh, but all of a sudden in 2023, right? So still this year, a new study comes out. They would hopefully acknowledge like, yes, we're going to go against the status quo and this is what we tested and this is what we found or yet reconfirming it or repurposing it through a study. So that's something to take into context. So November 18th, 2020 isn't too bad. Done in Russia, I have no problem with it as long as the study was set up well. Uh, this is with mice, okay? And the study is called Effect of the Long-Term Methylene Blue Treatment on the Composition of Mouse Gut Microbiome and its Relationship with Cognitive Abilities of Mice. What does that all mean? Well, the cool things that we didn't talk about in the other Methylene Blue videos um, was a long-term use. So their definition of long-term use here is only four weeks, but it's long enough to propose an idea of whether or not it's affecting the microbiome, which I'll define here in a second. And then also the cognitive abilities, which we know have been confirmed multiple times, even in human trials, including MRI studies. If you want more on that, look at the other video, Methylene Blue, the second one, it was like a 35 minute video. I talked about that study. But um, so the gut microbiome, what is a microbiome? The gut is really your stomach and part of your small intestine. The microbiome is uh, the variety of different bacteria that reside in there, both good and bad. You have commensal uh, bacteria, strains that you were born with that you carry with you. You want to feed and nurture them. Uh, you have some bad bacteria that can get in there and, and compete with the good bacteria for food, cause dysbiosis. But really a microbiome, we're finding a lot of evidence uh, that it has a broad range of benefits and ailments that can come from a dysbiosis or a healthy microbiome. So if you have a lot of good bacteria flourishing and, and nurturing you, this can help with cognitive function, uh, other mental health issues. It can be a form of anti-cancer as dysbiosis could potentially lead to a cancer. This also helps with um, 
obviously any GI ailments. It can also help with like fatigue, with energy, uh, and uh, really a host of, of many other things that the microbiome is attached to. So it's very important to have a good microbiome. So the gut microbiome, of course, is important based on the benefits I mentioned earlier, and also it enhances immune function to a healthy microbiome. But the reason I had a particular interest in this, we're getting a lot of uh, prescriptions coming in for methylene blue, which is awesome. Love to see that. And we primarily do capsule form, so it's still oral, which means it's going to go uh, into your stomach through your GI, even has liver um, first pass metabolism. But circling back to the stomach, methylene blue has antimicrobial properties. Uh, but potentially non-discriminatory, meaning it's going to prevent the bad guys, like it's an antiseptic for urinary tract infections. It was, you know, an anti-malarial agent. Uh, but it also might uh, stunt some of the good guys from growing too, and that could relate to potentially a dysbiosis, right? Which is something that we want to mitigate against. So um, this Russian study of the mice was kind of cool because it was a little bit more long-term. Um, they also paired it against, not only do they um, strain out the bacteria that are in the mice, but they pair it against any compositional changes and cognitive correlation. So they have a standardized maze test, which is uh, pretty routine for mice. So there's a way to standardize mazes to assess cognitive ability. And they run three different arms. They have a control arm, which means they weren't given any methylene blue. They had uh, a methylene blue arm that was dosed, I believe, at 15 uh, milligrams per kilogram uh, a day. And we're double checking that right now. 15, I'm stalling you. Yeah, 15 milligrams per kilogram a day. Uh, and then they also had another arm that was studied at 50 milligrams per kilogram a day, okay? And well, the results of this was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, at 15 milligrams per kilogram a day, they didn't find a significant change in the gut microbiome. So a statistically significant change. There was potentially some change, but it could have just been um, uh, distortion or, or what, what would you call that? Um, just insignificant, really, I guess you could say. And they use metrics in order to figure this out. But they did find it was statistically significant that the 15 milligram per gram a day mice uh, arm uh, outperformed in the cognitive ability in the maze run, um, I believe all of the weeks. So, and we'll have a chart there kind of showing it. And it, um, the other thing to know is the 50 milligram per kilogram a day uh, arm, they actually had no better of a cognitive uh, ability. So they didn't run the maze better than the control arm. So no benefit there, but it did significantly distort the biome of, of the mouse. So that's something important to know. Another thing to note is the composition of a mouse's gut's microbiome. They're going to have different bacteria and bacterial strains than we do. Um, so, you, you know, it's, it's not exactly apples and oranges, though. Uh, there is a limitation to the physiology of bacteria. They are going to behave differently to some degree and obviously uh, eat different types of things to survive on their own. But the physiology of bacteria, you have gram-positive, gram-negative. Um, we can kind of envelop the clump, right? Obviously, they categorize things for a reason, you, you know, phylums and species and kingdom, etc. for similarities. So what we can take from this because there was a statistically insignificant change in the 15 milligram per kilogram methylene blue per day dosed mice in their gut microbiome is that potentially it's not going to change our own biome, especially when we consider that the dose that is most commonly found in literature, the one that would most likely be of benefit for most people in a conservative manner but still efficacious would be the 0 0.5 to 4 milligram per kilogram per day. Okay, so I think that's an appropriate extrapolation uh, from the results here. And then that also points to um, the 50 milligram per kilogram per day seems like a pretty high dose compared to any other literature, right? And certainly enough, it, it's causing not only no benefit in, in cognitive ability, but also a, a form of dysbiosis potentially downstream, which later can have a host of illnesses. So uh, circling back to methylene blue, that uh, dosing is imperative. And another note about dosing, I know I'm long-winded, so hang in here with me. Maybe Dan will put um, some B-roll so you don't have to look at my face while I'm saying this. <laughs> uh, but just like your liver, 
you have certain enzymes. We all have a certain collection of them, but some are more expressed in, in human beings than others. So myself, I might have a certain uh, CYP. It's called the CYP, C-Y-P is the start of the enzymes name. But I might express one higher than uh, another associate of mine. But that actually makes a difference. It makes a difference in drugs, how we metabolize those, how we even activate drugs. Certain drugs are targeted for that reason, to have some activated by certain enzymes. What I'm getting at there is uh, with methylene blue, you know, I can't account for how many mitochondria you have in your in your body and then, and then how well your genes are expressed to um, have the mitochondria work properly and et cetera, right? The, the list goes on there as far as your genes, how you express them, to what degree. What I'm getting at there is we have 0 0.5 to 4 milligrams is the most widely uh, recognized dosing window, but we also have the individual's variation of how they express certain things within themselves. So everybody's going to react a little bit differently to methylene blue. So methylene blue's dosing can be kind of individual, but the beauty of getting more and more literature coming out is that we can at least narrow down the likelihood of where you might fall on this bell curve because we certainly don't want to necessarily be outliers on the dosing. Uh, it can happen, but if we can stay within this bell curve of our dosing here, we're likely to be on the safer side, right? And it's shown, I know it's with mice, but it's shown that uh, kind of an extreme dose had no benefit. Um, even the 15 milligrams per kilogram would be considered high for us, but that still showed benefit without necessarily killing off any, any of your uh, microbiome. Um, that was a long ramble. We're going to get on next to why I even brought this up and, and about misinformation, about bias, and about context. An interesting thing to note about the study, if you decide to delve into it yourself, again, I said no significant changes in the gut microbiome at 15 milligrams per kilogram per day. In fact, the verbiage, uh, when they're discussing that at that 15 milligram per kilogram and they're talking about the different bacteria, there was some nuance to it and they describe this, but they write there, however, these changes were rather of the oscillatory nature and did not exceed 1%. Similarly, Similar oscillatory changes within 1% caused by methylene blue at, con at a concentration of 15 milligrams per kilogram per day were also observed for, and then they go through two different strands of bacteria. However, in general, we found no significant changes in the intestinal microbiome composition, which could be a marker of the development of dysbiosis or other gut dysfunction. So again, some minute changes, oscillatory in nature, meaning like your gut's flora or the gut's microbiome is going to wax away in a little bit. Nothing significant there. Now I want to talk about the other article that may be referencing these results. Because what I take from this study is that compared to control, compared to mice that had nothing, uh, a dose of 15 milligrams per kilogram per day increased cognitive function and had no change in gut microbiome, which is crucial. The mice 50 milligram per kilogram per day, um, no change in cognitive function, so no real benefit there, and a, a big change in their biome leading to dysbiosis, bad. So too high of a dose, bad. That 15 milligram per kilogram they found, perfect. Control is what it is, right? This brings us to context. Context matters. So hopefully from this video, you're gaining a little bit more about methylene blue. Feel safe about it being uh, inside you if you take it orally, not affecting your microbiome at a safe dose, which is usually 0.5 to 4 milligrams per kilogram, but also learn that context matters to use your own discernment, your own discretion, and uh, have freedom of choice. Thanks for watching. Take care.